Uh, good evening and welcome to that Friday night live before Cardiff from that Mill podcast tonight. Uh, due to absences, really, I'm being thrown into the hot seat of a host for a live. I think it's the first one I'm doing, so wish me luck. But I'm lucky enough to be joined by two very capable gentlemen who I'm sure are going to help steer me through this. First of all, we've got Ben Green. Ben, good evening, mate. Evening, mate. You're right. I'm sure yeah, you're doing bad. a marvellous job as uh, live. Yes, show host. Thank you, mate. You scared me for a second there because just as I said that, you froze. Uh, so I thought I'd already lost you. I thought, my, I thought my hosting skills had been so bad, he'd already bailed on us. Um, and mm. we've got, we've got uh, Chris, two shows in a row with uh, me and you t- tonight, mate. Good evening. I know. It's like buses, isn't it? You, you never have one and then a couple coming along at the same time. Yeah, good evening, mate. I'm, I'm all good. How are you? You all good? Yeah, yeah. No complaints. No complaints from me at all whatsoever. And um, we should have Joe also joining us in a little bit. He's a... Uh, out for dinner, I think. Don't know who or where. Put some comments where he is. I think he's. Uh, I think he's having his teeth whitened. Actually. Oh, okay. Um, but I tell you what. Put some comments that, where Joe is. And then... Makeover. We got Mickey getting his hair done. <laughs> there you go. Even out to Turkey as well. Chris getting your teeth done. <laughs> Joe's <laughs> having his done. Um, I tell you what, everyone. Challenge for you. Put some. Co- put some comments in. Uh, where is Joe? Could be out for dinner. He might be bluffing to us. And then when he comes on, we'll show him some of the best ones. So um, I'm just going to rattle through some of the comments. Um, but just while I do that, I'm going to ask Ben. Uh, you didn't do um, a uh, the show with myself and Chris on uh, went out yesterday for everyone to listen to. So just firstly, wanted to get your thoughts um, on the winning midweek. Well. I mean, just typical us, isn't it? Like, two shocking... I don't say shocking performances. Two two shocking results against two sides you'd fully expect us to beat. And then in the most typical Mill fashion, we all go into midweek thinking, well, it's going to be a cricket score. And then we go and do that. Um, I think I tweeted was a definition of bipolar Millwall. And I think that, that just sums it up. Obviously, fantastic result. Hugely unexpected against a very, very... Good side riddled with Premier League quality. Um, but yeah, hugely unexpected, massive result. And one now, I think Plymouth played tonight, right? You said, Dan? Just yeah, they've got up. Leicester tonight. So they get beat tonight. I, I I thought this a couple of weeks ago, and I'm probably going to say it again now. I think if we win Saturday tomorrow, then I think we're probably safe. Yeah, Just because uh-huh. looking at the fixtures, all the other teams below us, they've got to play each other. So they all can't pick up maximum points. So, yeah, dare I say, yeah. I think we're safe if we win. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. Um, quickly, just before I ask Chris his thoughts on that, uh, where is Mickey? He's still out in Turkey. For anyone concerned about his whereabouts, please go and have a look at our Twitter page. Um, we were delighted to see he's came through his hair transplant. All OK. You can see his new hairdo on our Twitter page. And we are being told he's getting his teeth white before he makes his return next week. I think, Chris, you've actually given him a good place to go to, haven't you? Haven't you? Yeah, I've uh, done a refer a friend, so um... <laughs> that's what we like. And look, free, free, free shows in one week for you as well, mate. Mate, do you know what? Actually, if, um, if I did a talk sport thing the other day as well, so technically it's four. Four people are probably be getting fucking sick of me, to be honest. But, um, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> no, no one's getting sick of you, mate. So, what do you uh, make of Ben's comments about potentially if we win tomorrow? Um, do you think that will get us over the line? Do you think that'd be enough to get us safe? Given, so I think as long as Plymouth don't win tonight, my answer is yes, because I think with the results that happened on Wednesday, which <clears throat> largely went our way, largely we could have done with QPR holding on, but largely they, you know they they, they went our way. Um, so I think if Plymouth don't win, how many points would that be? Bear in mind, as Carl's just said, they've got a worse goal difference. So let's just say Plymouth draw, they'll have 46 points. We would go on to 50 points, so four points clear. But actually their goal difference is better, so I've just contradicted myself. I think win tomorrow and don't lose against Plymouth and we're safe. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of hoping. I know Plymouth have got a good goal difference on us, but I'm thinking just with the the volume of teams and so many teams down the bottom have still got to play each other. I think there's going to be enough teams taking points off each other towards the bottom of the league. I, I actually I actually think I'll be the opinion of even if we get two points, I think we'll be okay. It'd be nice to get it done as soon as possible. I think 
tomorrow represents a decent chance. I actually worked with a Cardiff fan and he said they've got absolutely nothing left to play for. They've just got players playing for their contracts. Um, they're not going to make the playoffs. They're not going to get relegated. Um, they see it, they've, they've had a solid season after a couple of seasons flirting with relegation in this league. Um, I would say that usually represents a good chance for us to pick up a good few points uh, here, Ben. But given how the games went when there was no pressure on us or when we were playing some lesser teams and then um, go and beat Leicester in the week, maybe we could do with playing someone someone like that again. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously, Rotherham, it was if they'd have lost that day, they would have been relegated. So they still had something to play for. Huddersfield obviously needed to win. Otherwise, they would have looked at it and probably thought it was going to be tough for them to, to peg us back. Um, so there was much more riding on it. I think, as you say, mate, Cardiff now not going up, not going down. They're just going to be plodding along now to the rest of the season on holiday mode. I think Harris, from his remarks in his interview, he wants us and wants the crowd to be bang up for it. So, look, well, everything's kind of in our favour. Um, yeah, they've got nothing to play for. So, hopefully, we go out all guns blazing and put on a good performance. Um my only concern would be big effort midweek. Can you go again Saturday with a fairly light squad? But yeah, as I say, they've got nothing to play for. So you'd think, you'd like to think they were on holiday mode. You'd, you'd definitely like to think that. And as well, I think that's that's kind of similar looking forward to our other fixture, obviously, other than Plymouth. But in terms of Sunderland and Swansea, Chris, again, two other teams that are they're both on the beach. They're pretty much going to be, uh, their seasons are done and dusted. So on paper, winnable games, but this is Millwall. It is, mate. And and the other thing as well, you know, we talked a bit about this on Tuesday. We do suit teams that want the ball um, because of the, the, the strengths that we have. Um, Cardiff won't want the ball. <laughs> yeah. uh, they'll, they'll, they'll come and, and, you know, they'll look to 30, 40% possession. That's what they're like in away games. Um, they will sit in. Um, uh, famous last words, but I don't think it's going to be a goal fest tomorrow. And it'll be up to us to try and break them down. Um, speaking to a Birmingham fan after their game, obviously against Birmingham on Tuesday, um, Birmingham were piss poor and the attitude of the players apparently is awful down there. I don't know if anyone's listened to Have a listen to Gary Rowett's post-match of Birmingham. It's a very interesting listen. But he basically throws the players under the bus and said that none of them are even trying, which is really interesting. And Cardiff obviously beat them 1-0. So let's just hope that our players come flying out the blocks, share the same concerns as Ben around, can they go twice in a week? In theory, they would have had one more day of rest than Cardiff. And obviously, Cardiff would have travelled to two away games in a week as well. So we've kind of got that benefit. Um, come out the blocks flying and uh, I'm, I'm hoping for a 1-0 win tomorrow. I mean, it would definitely be nice to, to get it done. Um, just looking down here. So we've got a couple of comments here. Firstly, from... From Alex, good evening to you, mate. Does SA deserve a start? And um, from Tony, he thinks SA will start. Ben, obviously, you was watching the game at home or on Tuesday night. Did, did it look like SA made a big impact when he came on from, from your perspective? Because to me, and uh, I think Chris as well, we both said this, that he kind of gave us a little bit more of a foothold in the game, particularly when we was going forwards. Yeah, and that's, that's what you're going to get, right? You're not going to get anything going from the other way. And, and nor do you really want that. Um Interesting, just on Chris's point, if, if Cardiff don't want the ball, we typically struggle to break teams down, don't we? And we lack that bit of creativity. So you'd have to say, you'd have to start from that perspective because he, he might be that sort of player, well, he's that sort of player, that'll have a bit of pace, a bit of trickery, he might be able to find the pass. Um, and yeah, if they're going to give us the ball, you want those sorts of players, certainly in the final third. So yeah, I mean, look, there's no reason why he wouldn't, right? And uh, say, if it's a game where we're going to have more of the ball, it is probably a good opportunity for him go and go and do what you, you, you're best at and what you're doing have been doing for England so um yeah I don't see why he wouldn't start do you um, go on, sorry chaps would, would you uh given what we what we've said there around the fact that we're probably gonna have more of the ball do you change Billy Mitchell or George Savon bring Denor in question I think it's hard. To, I think it's hard after the way they played in midweek. I I can understand an argument for it, but I think after they they played so well, I mean, obviously yeah, there is the argument they might be a little bit burnt out, and um, we will we'll touch on the George Savile contract extension news a little bit later on in tonight's podcast. Um, but in terms of Savile in particular, I think he's played pretty much every minute since Harris has came in. 
um, and obviously had that calf injury they were worried about over the international break. So essentially now he's had that contract triggered, they might they might be a bit more keen to give him a rest. I've always said I would quite like to see um, Billy and Casper play in the middle because I don't think them two have actually played together in the middle this season. I think it could be interesting to see how they could do. Um, but that might be an experiment for when we're mathematically safe. I think Harris might just want to keep it with the with the tried and tested just until uh, either it's mathematically done or, or he knows. Yeah, I don't, don't disagree with that. I think he'll go with tried and tested if they're both fit and and Harris thinks they can do 90 minutes. I would expect it to be Billy and, uh, and Sav in the middle. Um, as you probably know from the WhatsApp, Chris, I'm rapidly sort of losing a bit of not faith in Denor, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm str- I'm just struggling with him a bit at the minute. I know he hasn't played a great deal. I get that. Um, I can't imagine he's going to be too happy with his lack of game time. I know again the game probably didn't suit a Rotherham. It was going over his head. But I think me and Omar did our post match of Rotherham. We kind of went. He's got one assist all season. I know again you could argue that's not sort of what he's in the team for. But yeah, I'm struggling a little bit with him. I think. Yeah, I'd be interested to see if he's going to stay next year. Yeah, I, I, I agree, mate. I think um, I think the challenge is in the right team and the right system. I think he would be an excellent player at this level. Um, I think we saw glimpses of that as well earlier this season. I don't know whether we fully saw the best of him consistently. I'm not saying he was playing badly at all. But did we, did we ever see it consistently? Like I know his job isn't necessarily to be in the team and get get the assists, but you would still expect a few more, I think, wouldn't you? Yeah, uh, I was uh, amazed when I saw it was one. Sorry, chaps. I was amazed when I saw it was one. I don't know how many I thought it was gonna be, but yeah, I was I was surprised it was only one. Yeah, you you, you would expect more of, of of any central midfielder, by the way. Um, but I think with Denor, um he is he's got a touch of quality about him and as you said dan we we did see glimpses of it but the challenge is the way in which we're playing at the moment and the style neil harris has got us playing to try and win these games a lot of it is on being really aggressive and in faces winning balls high up the pitch winning the second ball is really crucial under neil harris and i don't think any of those things are casper's strengths and th- that that's the problem you know casper's strength is Picking a pass that no one else can see, maybe a little bit deeper to the point around um, not getting the assists. And I, I, I just I struggle to see how in a Neil Harris team that works. Maybe to Dan's point earlier that you know once ma- mathematically we're safe, we can play with a little bit more freedom, and he and he tests a few little things. Maybe even Alan Campbell will get a game. Not, um, <laughs> but yeah, maybe that's the answer because there's a lot of quality there. But agree that. <laughs> At the moment, it, it doesn't, it's just not working. Yeah. And um, just on this point as well from Gary, Gary, good evening to you, Savlon. 10 bookings in that two game suspension. We're past the threshold for that point now. Yeah, reset, so, isn't it? Uh, I think it's about 37, 38 games after that. So I think you'd probably need to get about 15 bookings now to get a suspension, um, which obviously, considering we've only got four games left, it'll, it'll do quite well, I think, to get that many bookings. But not, beyond, Tab, not, beyond, not beyond Sav. No, I was about to say, you wouldn't put it beyond George Savile, but it would be quite impressive going to get there. Um, ben, we spoke a little bit about tr- trying the um, using the tried and tested for um, the run-in. Obviously, I think it's no secret to everyone that you're a big fan of Tom Bradshaw. I'm sure you was delighted to see him get some minutes back on the pitch on Tuesday night. Where do you stand on him over Obafemi at the moment? Because Obafemi probably had his best game in a Lions top. Oh, he, uh, Brad is, isn't... isn't... Obafemi's quality, like that's just that's fact, right? As much as I love Bradders, I can't, I can't die on that hill. Um, yeah, look, I, Obafemi's not going to be here next year. That's also fact. He's going to go somewhere else or, or go back to Burnley, playing the championship with them. Um, it's great to see Bradders get back on the pitch. I, I do feel like he would have really helped us in this, this run in um, at games like. Rotherham, Huddersfield certainly, just someone that is an out and out runner and will give you everything. He would just been suited to those games. Um but yeah, look, he's not gonna he's not gonna start over Obafemi. It'd be it'd be mad for me to sit here and say I think he will. Um but yeah, I'm pleased he, he's gonna get some game time 
before the end of the season. Um, um, Could maybe... be a good option for us as well if, if Harris wants to leave Fleming in, in his more kind of natural, deeper midfielder. If he does want to change it up a little bit, he can actually have two natural strikers on the pitch. Not to mention that there's talk of Kevin Nisbet also being back yeah. in the squad tomorrow as well. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've said this for a while with Fleming. I think he's been, I think that sort of, I've called it a nine and a half. I think that's his position for us. I think he gives us a bit more of a presence up there. He can hold the ball up. He's strong. His link-up plays good. He's our most natural finisher. Um, so you want him as far up the pitch as you can, in my opinion. I don't really want him in the 10, to be perfectly honest. Again, he's one of those sorts of players. How many times do you see him sort of threading balls in between the full-back and the centre-half? You don't. I'd, I'd rather him in and around the box. He's a, he's a, he's a finisher, isn't he, really, um, for yeah. an attacking midfielder. So, yeah, I, I, I don't mind him playing in that, in that role. Um, again, next year in all Femi goes back, I wouldn't mind seeing Fleming and Nisbet, Fleming and Bradders, whoever it might be, Amaku and Fleming, whatever. I like him high up the high up the pitch for us. Well, you've actually just segued into another good point I was going to make. So we've had a comment from a good friend of the show, Dan. Dan, good evening to you, mate. What's what are people's thoughts on that article Zian put out about wanting to play at the highest level he can? Um, I don't know whether people saw this is only something I very briefly had the chance to read earlier today. But Fleming said he wants to play at the highest level, le uh, highest possible level he can. Plan A is to try and do that when Millwall. We said obviously we failed to get in the playoffs last season. We failed to get in the playoffs again this season. Plan B would be to to go and do it myself if that's that if if he has to leave the club. Um, what what are your thoughts on this personally? I'm just going to go because we have had another um comment on this from if I can just find it from Millwall Holdings. Good evening to you. Um, yeah, see it. every player wants to play at the highest level. Nothing wrong in what he said, and I I do think to be honest that there is a fair argument. The only argument is that when we're still in a little bit of a relegation battle when he's one of your main players do you want one of your main players coming out and saying that i'm kind of interested in leaving the club in the summer I, I, i'll yeah i'll go on that so i think um i would largely agree with both you and uh mill holdings i think the article is ill-timed but we don't know it was actually like do we know he said that recently it was but apparent we, we, a, 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 um, so I haven't seen the official interview, but a couple of the English press, like Football League World, and then the seventy-two, they've reported that he did an interview with Dutch oh, media. Those, those two real reputable sources. Yeah, I know. This, this, I'm this sure wild, the, yeah. the podcast right. group chat will, will love uh, know my absolute love for Football League World as a source that we uh, often refer to in our group chat. Yeah, source. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> um, but no, I, I mean, at the end of that, he said something similar last season in the summer. I don't know if you, there was an article that basically said it was basically a real shame for us not to get there. And, you know, my aspiration is to get there with Millwall, but I've always wanted to play at the highest level. I personally don't really see a problem with it. I think, as I said, not the best time in, but I don't see a problem with it. He, the thing I have more of a problem with, if I'm honest, is I don't think his performances this year have warranted a move to uh, the higher level. So maybe, maybe not a, Maybe not a Premier League club, but I think there's there's definitely teams that are, with all due respect to us, better Championship teams in terms of they got more money. It they're going to have higher situation. aspirations. Yeah, mate, I could I could see him. Club. I think I've said this a few times, but I could see him working quite well at someone like a Sheffield United because I think they quite like players that are you know think of Fleming's for the position Fe Fleming plays and for his physicality. I think that's quite a unique selling point for him. So I can kind of see him fitting into that Sheffield United squad quite nicely. I think he. It's quite similar to Sander Burge, who, who they got rid of last summer. Ben, what's your thoughts on on Fleming's well, comment? Just, yeah, just following on exactly from what Chap said, really. Poorly timed, but his performances this year, haven't. Well, who is he going to go and play for in the Premier League after the way he's played this year or the numbers he's put up this year? Not going to, I mean, anyone, really. Um, there, it's only going to be one of the three relegated teams. And then it's going to be probably when they come down and looking to bounce back up, I would imagine. Um, is someone going to take him? So you look at those top three sides that are going to go up this year, say it's Leeds, Saints and Ipswich and or Leeds. Is he going to get in any of those sides? Absolutely no chance, in my opinion. Um, yeah. So it is only going to be, as you say, Dan, a Sheffield United type side that has, has come back down. And again, that's just my opinion. Um, I, Yeah, I, I just can't see him playing the Premier League to, yeah. uh, and, make it, and being a starter. Certainly. I think I think Gaza raises a good point here, though, in terms of the, the contract length. I, I would like to keep Zian, but 
if he's saying he wants to go and play at the highest level, if he's only got one year left on his contract, we can't do the same mistake of losing players on a free transfer. We do need to take the money that's there. Even with one year left on his contract, I still think we'd be in a position... I was going to say, Jackson, you mentioned that a couple of times, right? Sorry, Dan, he's only, this yeah. summer, it's only a year left, right? Um. Well, I, I guess the we're quite good, aren't we, at putting options in for, for players? Um, I, I don't know. If... I think it also depends on whether it's a club or player because you get all these different ones. Like obviously Leonard and Savile, they were um, appearance based obligations. I don't know whether Fleming's is appearances over X Y Z or whether it's the club can it is, automatically it be appearance based. Just because I didn't he's think so. Start every game yeah. and he's not he's not injury prone. Leonard and Bradders, 100%, I'd imagine they have to hit a certain number of games because they've had long injuries and been out for a period of yeah. time. And because their age as well, right? Zian doesn't yeah. have that problem. So I guess I would like to think we have an option. Whether the option is on him or us remains to be seen. But if we don't, then yeah, we have a three-year contract and we need to sell him in the summer if the money's right. Problem yeah. is what do you define as the money being right? Because a player that's put the numbers up he has this season that says one year left would be fuck Plymouth for winning apparently um would be nowhere near what arguably was worth last summer so this is the thing um the other thing but I want he, to mention you here, can't also just quick before you, you can't completely discredit last season it's, it's still a season that he's done in the championship it's still very impressive numbers for a midfielder 100 percent, 100 percent. but I think even the same even last season the thing that I think Zian lacks that I think you need in the Premier League is athleticism. He's a very strong lad. I, you know, I don't think many players knock him off the ball, but he's pretty slow. And he doesn't have that kind of raw athleticism that I think you need to play at the very top level. I could be wrong, um, but I think that's the same with probably our, our best technical players. You put him in that bracket, you put Denor in that bracket. They're not quick as well you know you look at players like uh, let's pick one at random uh Sainz for Norwich he's got the quality but he's also quick and athletic with it um and for that reason I, I don't think Zian Fleming is a Premier League player at the moment no personally. um I'm just going to come in on this comment because it's addressed at me Alex good evening to you mate um we all love Fleming I think well most of us do I'm certain I'm certainly in that camp um, but you can't put him in the same league as So the reason I picked out Sander Burge was I'm not saying he's any, I don't think he's as good as Sander Burge, don't get me wrong. I just think in terms of the physicality that he brings into the, into the centre of the park, in terms of what he tries to do, I think his game is quite similar to Sander Burge, with them, especially with them late runs into the box for the um, for crosses and stuff like that. I, just, I don't, I agree with you though, he's not at Sander Burge's level, but I just think in players off the top of my head, that's. Um, the player that I could think of that was um, the most comparable just off the top of my head. Um, Dan Riggs has came in again here saying, he also did say in the article, if the money is right for the club and him, because obviously I think it was quite well documented. He was keen on the move to Burnley last summer, but yeah. I mean, I know it Mill was not his club, but you can all, you always see him. I, I, I think the one thing, even when we weren't doing well under Edwards and when he was get, getting hooked after like 70 minutes, where after 70 minutes went under Edwards, I don't think the one thing you could generally criticise him for this season has been his work rate and his effort, even when it hasn't been going his way sometimes. Yeah, I, I, I mean, he was one person that I think has kind of stepped up through the relegation fight. He has seemed up for it. I don't, actually, all of it really, to be fair, even when he's been criticised for not scoring his goals and not doing enough, I don't think I've ever said he doesn't look interested. I think no, I, did, seen, I have seen. I did see a couple of comments about him not looking interested, but from what I've seen, to be honest, I I know we spoke a lot about Cooper, and I actually said I think Zian would be a personally for me a strong candidate if you wanted to take the armband off Cooper because of mm -hmm. Zian. He's I can often see him back for set pieces, helping to organise the defence. Yeah, I imagine he was that sort of player in the changing room as well that will just demand better standards from everyone. Just he just yeah. seems that sort of player and person. Just going back to the comment of. If it's enough, what do you fellas, what would you put on that? What would you say if we got a bit of X, we'd have to sell? I think if he's got one year left on his contract, then it's probably you're probably looking at five million or or something like that. I still think you can't discredit what he did last season. I think if he's got two years left, I think you've got to be looking 
um, maybe towards slightly the bottom end of what Dan Riggs has put on the screen for the price range, probably eight to 10. I think 10 might be a bit generous, but if you get a couple of clubs interested, you might get a bidding walk. You might get it up a little bit more. So I think if, I think it just really depends on that contract length to be completely honest with you. Chaps. I, I, I'll be honest. I'd agree with what Dan said. And that, that's why it sickens me that if we if we got offered anywhere near the reported 10 million for Fleming last season, like what a major cock up by the club not to not to take it. That I think they will been... be looking back and regretting it. Oh, oh massively. I'm I'm sure they are because it's it's um it, that that money could have could have brought Cresswell. Like I'm I'm making it up, but do, do you know what I mean? Like the, these are the sorts of investment decisions. And when you look at our squad, probably going off on a slight tangent here, maybe it's one better for the summer, but when you look at our squad, how many saleable assets do we actually have? I've always, I've, I've raised this point quite a lot. I think Fleming, um, arguably Denor, obviously I think his value has gone down a little bit just with the, the current recent events, Essa and Amaku, um, and that, that would possibly be it in terms of permanent players that we have under contract at the club. I did add Danny and Billy in that just because they're young. And I think, I think they, would, they would get another championship side. I'll have a championship I, side with one of them. Certainly Billy. I, I, Danny, say, I, I think Billy a bit higher up. Dan, I think Danny's a bit scraping it a little let, bit. Let me, let me rephrase the question. How many players do you think that we could sell in today's market for a million or more? Well, yeah, not many. Yeah, that's... Just, I mean... I mean, when you think about it, like... I don't, I don't know how much the club paid for, for Nisbet, for example, but obviously what you can't discount is that players track records even before they've, they've came here. You know, if, if Hibs came in and offered you a million for Kevin Nisbet this summer, depending on how much we paid, you, you might take it. I think it just depends on on the on the club. and uh, Yeah, his track record, obviously. he might, We don't know this. He might want to go back to Scotland and obviously the club will look to facilitate a move, but as um as Fleming said that it's got to be right for it's got to be right for him and and the club hasn't it yeah if, i mean just going back to the Fleming thing, if the if the figures were reported in saying what they were as i say supposed to be believed then we're absolutely off our heads we haven't taken that i think obviously circumstances may may have changed certainly with, with jb passing right so i think that yeah. i think i think that play i think that did play a, quite a quite a big part in it last summer but even still and i've said this a few times on, on various shows that someone at the club if, if jb was the driving force in wanting to get a certain figure that's where i feel someone like steve Cavanagh's or your director of footballs you've got to be stronger to your owner of the club and say look we've paid x we're now going to get why we've had one year out of him. We could do everything in between, like what chaps said. We could buy two or three players, right? That's, that's the thing you've got. You've got to look. You've got to look at the most. That you've even if JB hadn't passed, that yeah, someone in the club needs to take that sort of bite of bollocks but, and say we should have got rid of him at ten million because you still five hundred extra initial outlay or whatever it would have been. Do you know what um, I mean? That's that's the poor decision of it. Yeah, but if we did get ten million for him, like what ten million? It's, it, don't get me wrong, it's a lot of money, but like, what can that actually get you in, in the market these days? Because it's every everything's so overinflated. Like, how much do you think Charlie Cresswell, a young English centre half, coming out of his first season playing senior football after do, having a really strong second after the season? How much do you genuinely think you reckon he'd have cost last season if we'd have tried to buy him in the summer permanently from Leeds? Well, I'll tell you one thing: it's not going to be as much this summer. And well, that's probably, yeah, that's true. That's, yeah, we probably lucked out in that respect because if Leeds go back up, he's going to want to be out the door because he obviously was promised game time this year. He's not going to get it next year, so no. um, yeah, we we might have lucked out in that respect, and we might have saved ourselves a few quid. We might get him at a, a cheaper price, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe two, three mil. Is that is that, is that on the cheap side? Do you think? I, I think that's on the cheap side when you add in the fact. I think when you look at certain factors, like he's young, he's English for Leeds, he's an academy graduate. So in terms of FFP in the long term, because obviously we're seeing Leicester Premier League side kind of struggling with that a little bit in terms of profit and sustainability, that would all contribute towards that. 
If if or if it was three million, you would imagine that Leeds would be putting a a rather generous sell on clause in there. Yeah, for sure. And I I um I don't think Charlie Cresswell will have a a short list of suitors in the summer. So no. um, I think we'll we'll be we'll, we'll need to play on the fact that he was. I get the feeling that Cresswell maybe like liked by the fans, but I don't think he is particularly liked by the manager because he's not been given any game time there whatsoever. And all right, it's yeah. a completely different league in which they're playing him, right? You know, they're well, it's not a different league, but you know what I mean. That the quality of player they've got at their disposal, but he was loved here. Um, and I think we need to play on that because I think he probably will be offered more money to go elsewhere, and that's just the harsh reality that's of where we're season. playing. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to see what we can do. Um, yeah. But it's going to be a massive teams. summer, isn't it? Let, let's be honest. There's, there's yeah. going to be a lot of players going out, whether we sell our best players or not. There's yeah. still going to be a lot of turnover. So yeah. um, and just huge. while we talk on summer, we have we have started to plan some shows for the for the postseason already. There's going to be. Um, we're, we're planning on doing a, a version of that Millwall podcast awards. Um, so we might be doing some short lists and there might be a chance to do some voting for you guys. Me, Ben, Stephen and Omer, we're going to get together and react to our um, our pre-season predictions. I think me and Ben are, are really looking forward to that one. Man, I, I actually did it right. I okay, did yeah. Right. I've got I, one I, of them. I've got one of mine. I, no, I've got absolutely one of mine spot on. Uh, well, hold on. Let me, let me define it all right. I think I was the one that said that we would finish quite sort of lower down the league. Let's not year. listen, let's not spoil it. Listen, we've got that. And there's gonna in terms of the the recruitment and changes we would make, there's probably gonna be, I would imagine, at least that's a, gonna be a ten part series. I, I was gonna I genuinely imagine that's probably going to be at least a three, maybe even a four or five parter. Um we'll rotate the panel for that one. We'll try and get everyone a say in terms of what we do with the squad. So we are going to try and keep some content coming in the off season as hard as it's going to be. Um, that's what we want to do. And I know Stephen's not here, but if anyone is interested in doing the Who Are You as well, that'll be there'll be some stuff like that going out over the summer, then please get in contact with one of us, Stephen, or the pod. Um, gents, just going to rattle through some comments, but while I do that, question from Millwall Holdings, do you think Zian is as good a player as Alex Ray? Oh. What a question. Um, all right, so I only remember my first game was in 95. So I only really remember the tail end of Alex Ray's career. So I want to caveat that my answer by by that because I'm I'm not as old as I obviously look. Um, but um, it's the grey hair, mate. It is, mate. It is. It is. But I've got no wrinkles, so you know. Um, but no, Alex, Alex Ray was a, a very good player. He was a he was a very good goal scoring midfielder uh, from from memory. He was a right terrier as well, wasn't he? Like he. he didn't mind a bit of argy bargy in that. For me personally, I don't think you could say Fleming is as good as Alex Ray because I think Alex Ray um, did what he did for a lot longer and more sustainable, uh, and his numbers were much higher. So uh, he then went on to have a very successful career in the Premier League. So personally, I would say Alex Ray is better than Zian Fleming. Ben, you, um, you, you're the same age as me, right? You, yeah, probably... mate. Yeah, no, I'm the same. Don't, don't fucking look at me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> like, Who's Alex Ray? <laughs> I'll be comparing James it to James Henry. fucking Henry, mate. <laughs> God, Jesus. Um, James Henry was decent. Well, yeah, I'd it was, just say, it wasn't mate. bad. Yeah. Um, a couple of interesting comments here that I've just picked up on um, in terms of, of Fleming, in terms of his valuation. 10 million, nowhere near. 2 million max. I'd snap your hand off a of four million for Fleming. Um, I think I think that's incredibly harsh. I think we're being really short sighted there in terms of what. He, that's, oh, there you go. Yeah, um, I think it, I think we're being. In, I think you know John John and Greeny boy. I think we're, you're being incredibly short sighted there. What he did last season, his debut season in England, um, was you know really good when you consider his position and and everything. And then. This season, it's not just Fleming that's dropped off. It's the whole team. You've got to consider that as well. Like, can any anyone in this squad honestly put their hand up and say, yeah, I've been better than I have last season? No. So I think you have to take them facts into account. I, I do think it does, as I said, it depends on um, the, the length of the contract that we've got left. Yeah, it does. Um, and then we'll have to wait and see. And there's another comment here. Could have, should have signed Ballard. Uh, maybe worth Trevor what we bought him for. Um, I know there was a lot of talk about 
about Ballard. Um, from what my understanding was, was that we did try and sign him, but he did fail a medical. Um, he had a knee injury when he was with us. He had a knee injury before and that flared up in, in the medical. Um, and I think it was quite a big outlay for the club at the time. So they was reluctant to to press ahead with that. I think he also had the same issue at Burnley that summer because Burnley tried to sign him and then eventually he did, he did go to a, he did go to Sunderland. So um, I, I think that's one that I can't really criticise the club for because he was a good player for us. And I think in the future he could go on and uh, make a decent profit for, for Sunderland now if he can stay fit. But I know he's had fitness issues for them as well a little bit. So... Yeah, another good point here from from John about it's not all pay transfer fee, it's what we can afford and wages. Any decent player will want upwards of thirty five thousand pounds a week. And I think when you look at some of the players with a bit more pedigree in our squad in terms of your Tangangas and your Oberfemis, that's kind of reflected in that, isn't it, Ben? Yeah, hundred percent, mate. Um, be interesting. I've, I've always said it'd be interesting to see what we actually are paying percentage wise on those players wages i can't imagine we're not going to be anywhere near those sorts of numbers i'd imagine they'll be on i mean you'd imagine tanganga would be on can't be far off that can he get spurs if not more he can't be and this is why <clears throat> we can we can dream but there's there's i can there's no chance of a femi being next year because no. The other thing with Obafemi, to your point earlier, Ben, is that he he will he, he will probably be in the Burnley first team if they come down. If not, someone else will sign him, right? So it, he ain't going to be here. Tanganga, maybe there's a slight more of a chance because I I, I know there's been contradicting articles come out, but I don't really see how he's going to be getting in Spurs' team. Um, but at the same time, I think he'll be on a wage that makes him out of our price range to, to the whole point of this conversation. So these short-term loans have been good because I think Tango has been, you know, I think he's 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 proven... You can his, seize glass, can't you? You can. But I think that's all they are. Um, and in reality, they're probably being asked to play very different roles to the ones that they were originally signed for under Joe Edwards. Yeah. Um, another loan player here, Norton Cuffey. Do you think he'll come back again on loan? Um, I can't see it personally, just because since Harris has came in, he's dropped right out of the starting eleven. I think if Edwards is still here, that there, there might have been a possibility because I don't think he's going to get into Arsenal's team again. And under Edwards, he was getting regular minutes and, and playing well, adding adding end product to his game. But I, I just don't think that's. I think that's always going to be the problem under Neil Harris because we have seen. I get it's the where we are. He's probably wanting to use the tried and tested a little bit, but it's difficult, isn't it? Because you want to give the youth players a chance, you want to be able to get some of these young talents in online. Yeah, I mean, he, he he would have been one. I would have said we would have had a possibility of get getting back right, as you said. Tanganga next to no chance of a Femi, no chance. But yeah, Norton Cuffey, I would have actually said we might have had a decent opportunity of getting him back, or even maybe on a permanent. That seems now very very unlikely. The fact that he's not got any game time really under Harris. Well, hasn't started, has he? Since Harris has come in. No, no, don't, don't really. So, uh, no, sorry, he started at Leeds. Leeds. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's just looking unlikely, isn't it? Um, and he would have been so. You talk about sellable assets, right? He, he would have been someone, he's a young English ex Arsenal academy player, if he would have come to us. He would have been one you'd look at to go, he would have had a resale value in a couple of years' time, or he has a couple of good years or a good year of us. You look to move him on. So, it's just another long list of maybes, isn't it, for us? And just poor transfer execution, if you want to call it that. I think he's been he's been a victim of the change in formation because I think with Brook, Brook is a is a very good wing back in a five. Um, I think the problem is is he's not. I mean, I, I don't think there's anyone in our entire club that's as good as Ryan Leonard as a one-on-one -on -one defender. So he's certainly not going to get in at right back. And moving forwards, I don't think he trusts him enough to do the defensive work that he thinks Honeyman will do. So Harris, therefore, isn't playing him for that reason. So I think that's why um, that's why he's not playing, I think, to be in honest. And I agree with Ben. It's, uh, it's a shame because I think first half of the season, I, I bet if you'd have asked him, he loved it here. And if it had carried on playing, I think he would have had a really good chance of bringing him in with resale value. But mm. it is what it is. But um, yeah, 
Can I ask a question for for everyone? I'll ask it to you, fellas, and then obviously ask to ask to the listeners. If you could have, if you could sign Tanganga or Cresswell in the summer permanently, who would it be? We've had this. We have had this question a couple of times. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's fine. I always think it's interesting because obviously we're seeing more of Tanganga now, so I feel like we are getting a slightly better picture of what Tanganga's like. I, th- I think it's difficult. I think I said for the here and now, I'd rather have Tanganga. But if the club maybe wants to look at it from a, a business perspective, I think you would probably go for Cresswell. Yeah, I'm sitting here with a smile on face because that is fucking a tough question, that chap. Um, <laughs> oh, doesn't it? How much, yeah, do, how much do you think Tanganga's worth? Because that's, that's the comment that's on the screen now. How much do you Well, you only got to go think? by what Augsburg are willing to pay, right? And what was that, £12 million? To ten, Spurs? It was 10 I reckon it's gone down a bit now, though. I reckon. Yeah, it's... but it still, he's a 10 million, or whatever, 10, say, £10 million pound player. So he's, yeah. he's worth that because the club were willing to pay that, right? If he'd have hit a certain amount of appearances for them. Obviously, it turns out he got injured and didn't play anything as a change of manager. But anyway, they obviously thought that he was worth 10 million quid. Um, it's an interesting one. I think it's exactly what you said, Dan. I think it depends on how we want to view probably next season as well. Is it, are we going to have a little bit of a rebuild? Are we going to probably look to bed in your mayors, Amaku more game time, SA get more game time, and actually look to try and build a bit more of a a youthful side and with a bit of a longer term, then you'd probably go with Creswell and say, look, that's that's the route we're going down. We're going to have a go with some youngsters. If you think we're going to be higher up the league next year, which I can't see, you'd probably have to go, as you say, for the here and now and get Tanganga in. That being said, he's not he's not, he's not not old, is he, Tanganga? Is he no, 24? no, he's, he's not old. No, but I do, yeah. I, I do think... No. I, I think, yeah. I think it's, it's an interesting argument. Well, um, Gaza London's comment on screen now, 14 million wage bill, um, according to a table that came out today. So that table is part of the agent fees that came out. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but what I do remember from earlier, um, I'll grab them up in a second, is that we had the fourth, we paid the fourth least amount of money in this league to agents for the last year, I believe it is. So that will include uh, contract extensions and that will also include new player signings. Um Obviously, agents we know can make make a stupid amount of money these days. You only have to look at um, Jorge Mendes and Mino Raiola in terms of what they're making when when some of their clients get transferred. Um, go to you first, Chris. What do you think? What do you make of them numbers for us? Um, I think the, the the numbers, assuming people know what we're talking about, um, said that basically there was sixty one million spent in. <laughs> in the uh it's absolutely mind blowing 61 million in agents fees right and then there's a couple of bits there as well within that so that is only the number in which the club is paying the agent but there is also sometimes another fee that comes via the existing club if that makes sense so this is just the acquiring team that's paying that wage that's the first thing to note the second thing to note is not all of that financial data, although it's booked in that business, sorry, booked in that period, sometimes it isn't. So, for example, Leeds will have some of uh, their Premier League signings from the previous season included in that number. And then, like, I don't know, Rotherham or Sheffield Wednesday will have some of their League One signings. So there's just some variables there. There'll but, be some discrepancies, yeah. Yeah, but we are 1% of the total number, 600k out of 61 million, which is... <laughs> What does that tell you then? <laughs> I don't really know how to... Yeah. I don't really know. Does it say that... You can look at it a couple of different ways. You can look at it and say we're, we're managed quite well because um, you know we're not overspending, we're not paying out stupid money. Or you could look at it and say that we are not spending enough, but I guess we're probably spending within limitations of what we... we live have within your means, right? isn't it? Yeah. So... But gents, carry, obviously, I'm sure you're going to carry on talking about this. I've got to drop yeah. off. Um, yeah, no worries, Chris. Been a pleasure I'll, I'll to see have you. you. Around the end tomorrow. Yeah, see uh, you soon, mate. Been a pleasure Hello, to have you with us, mate. Have a good evening. Cheers. Um, and just a quick public service announcement: to Say Joe has said, unfortunately, will not be joining us tonight either. So, unfortunately for everyone, you're stuck with me and Northern Wall for the rest <laughs> of your Friday night. We're probably going to look to wrap this up around about quarter past nine tonight, slightly shorter than usual, um, but. 
I want to go and watch the game. I've, uh, I've also got to go work tomorrow, so I want to try and get an early night. And Ben's got his own reasons as well. Um, so Ben, going back onto it, what do you think? What do you make of the agent agents' fees? Yeah, I mean, it's, I'd imagine again, this is my football manager head on here, Dan. Your agent fees are normally equivalent to sort of the size of your transfers, right? The fact that ours typically aren't overly big, certainly for 2024 standards or ever, you're never going to have huge agent fees, or you'd like to think you wouldn't have huge agent fees. Again, typically, the clubs we're buying from as well, not massive sorts of clubs. So, um, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that we're, we're at the bottom end of that that table. And look, is it is it a table you want to be high up in? No, exactly. I mean, you look, you look at some of them. I think there was a, a comment from Anthony up here about parachute payments, about how they need to go. How can we compete when every relegated team gets 100 million over the three years? I mean, it's, it's spot on. And when you look, obviously, at, at Leicester, obviously, the pickle they've got themselves into, I think them. Um, some news came out today where the EFL actually tried to get their points deduction applied this season because, um, well, they, they just tried to. I don't know whether yeah. they want they don't want Leicester to get promoted, whether they want the romance of switch going up, or whether they can't be asked to have leads in the EFL anymore. I do not know. Um, going off on a tangent on that, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it's something that just really annoys me and it's something that... <sighs> I mean, you look at the likes of Derby, right? They nearly put themselves completely out of business because they cheated, basically, for a long time. Yeah. Um, and it's something that frustrates me because when you're at a club or support a club like we do that work within the laws, don't overspend, you have an owner or a club that is ran properly, if you like, if you want to call it that, and certainly in terms of financial well-being. Um, it's just, it just, yeah, it really annoys me because... As I say, you basically have clubs up the league that have cheated. And I say, I'm using Derby as an example. Yes, there's many. But yeah, there's loads you could think of. But they were a club that always finished above us for a period of time. No doubt probably beat us to playoff places in the yeah. years gone by as well. And as I say, ultimately, they've cheated. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, I think this is a, this is a good point, though. I mean, there is going to be more money around with this new TV deal. Obviously, we've, we've discussed it a little bit. And I think, again, this will be something that we did discuss properly in the postseason when the, the money hopefully comes into the club all being well. But obviously, I think for, for match-going fans, this is going to be a pain next season, Ben. Obviously, Sky have said there's going to be a lot, a lot more games that are going to be televised. Uh, I think it's going to be almost 60% of games across the FL, which means there isn't going to be too many 3pm kickoffs potentially for us next season. Um, which I know obviously will be frustrating, not just for home games, but for people like me and you who go to the away games and we already get up early as it is to go to a lot of them. We might have to get up even earlier or maybe even not go home some nights because it's going to be so late sometimes. Yeah, and look, it's something, again, I've spoken about on shows. I, what they've done with the red button, for example, look, it's great that you get that opportunity to, to see Millwall midweek, um, certainly for people that are obviously living in and around London that are against, say, I'm just using Blackburn as an example because that was a recent one, um, the, it, it, north and their long round trips, you have to take time off work. But it does kill it. It completely kills it. It kills atmospheres at games. It will, it will eventually kill clubs because they're not getting the income in on those, on those match days. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a good thing. Um, in the long term of football, it's great for the accessibility for to be able to watch games, but I don't yeah. think it's a good. It's it's good long term for, no. for the game and for clubs. Obviously, as they've said there isn't going to be any eye follow, so that means no games live on Millwall TV. I think again, this is something for a wider show, but just to maybe put you on the spot a little bit here, mate. Do you think if they are going to continue to televise this many games, if we're being realistic, it's only going to go up no matter whether Sky keep it or it switches to a different broadcaster? How far away do you think we are from seeing the 3 p.m. blackout dropped? I don't know how far you're away from that, but yeah, in answer to the sort of first part of the question, mate, yeah, absolutely. It's gonna it's not gonna be long, is it? Um, until you're gonna have access to certainly I think championship and, and the EFL, I think you're gonna have access to, to everything, whether it's say whether it be through Sky or um other providers. But I mean look, you, you, the amount of games now is just ridiculous that's on telly. Um it, it's not gonna get it's not gonna get any less anytime soon, is it? So no, that's the thing that there's so much well there, there's when I'm sitting at home, like t tonight, I'm going to go off and watch the game. Fantastic. But 
if you're a Leicester fan that's had to go down for, for a game that was supposed to be Saturday 3 p.m., that's now been changed onto a Friday night 8 p.m., game's not going to finish till 10 o'clock. You're not going to get up back to Leicester probably until about potentially two or three in the morning. No, no I mean, look, you're, you're talking about Leicester there, team that's recently won the Premier League, been in Europe, big clubs. Yeah. I know we like to think of ourselves as the smallest big club in the world, but we are a, a, a fan base that, certainly for away games now, I mean, Blackburn, we had 250 or something. Dare I say, if that wasn't on the red button and wasn't available, I'm not saying we've got 2,000 up there, but you might have got much more of a following. Now, that is... It's easy for me to say that because I live around the corner from Blackburn. But same yeah. for me coming down midweek, right? I don't have to come down now to see the game. No. Would I have like, could I have come down to the game for Leicester? Yeah, but I, I, it's on telly. I didn't have to. So yeah. I know there'd be a million fans that are like that for every club. But as I say, long, longevity, I just, it, it concerns me. And it, it, look, you want the atmospheres in, in grounds and in games. There's, there's no point not having fans there or having low crowds. It's just, yeah. it's, I mean, I can't, it doesn't help the players. It just doesn't help anything. So, as I say, yeah, longevity, it concerns me. Just on that point there, I'm sure we're going to change, yeah. but just on Richards, yeah, 100%, I'd be going after your Hansen if I could. He I'd be going him. after your Hansen. I, I, I would be after Sorber Thomas as well. I, I think. He, well, he my, my one from Huddersfield, Dan, would be Jack Radoni. Yeah, I was about I'm to say so, them too. Would be. So impressed with him when we played him at home this year. Yeah. He was a completely different player than I thought he was. Yeah. Um, and I know we were linked with him. I think he chose Huddersfield over us, didn't he? Because he was an AFC Wimbledon yeah. uh, lad. Yeah, and I think yeah. we were, I think it was a Harris, previous Harris era that we were after. Yeah. He would be someone I'd be, yeah, chucking money at getting, definitely. Whit- Whitaker, I'd absolutely love to, but we don't have... We, first of all, there's teams like Napoli after him uh, sorry Lazio like <laughs> big Mostly big European, European clubs and uh, yeah we ain't we wouldn't be able to compete with that we also don't have the money um to go with that um so moving on a little bit so we're on the topic of summer we're talking about a couple of players there potentially Ben um we've had the news today and for anyone who isn't aware Ryan Leonard and George Savile have both had options triggered in their contract. They've played a certain amount of games, which has triggered a contract extension. I believe it's just another year because they were both due to be out at the end of this season. Um, I mean, firstly, I think Leonard absolutely warranted and deserved. He's always had his fitness issues, but this season he's been fit for the majority of it. And he's probably a shoe in for player of the season, you would imagine. Um, Saville, I do like Saville, but if it's coming at maybe at the expense of, I mean, I, we spoke about Denor a little bit earlier, so um, I think we all heard our thoughts there. Ben, ben what's your uh, Ben, what's your thoughts on uh, both of them earning their new contracts? Yeah, I think thoroughly deserved. Um, both of them, as you say, Lenny's going to be player of the season. Should have been player of the season. Um, sorry, Sav should have got player of the year last year, and obviously was robbed. Um, Lenny should get it this year. If he doesn't, it will be a fucking travesty. Yeah. Um, yeah, thoroughly deserved for Lenny. Just one, I love Sav, and I don't upset Stephen here, but I just he he does have he, his limitations. Is, I think yeah, that's what you're kind of trying to say, isn't it? It is. Without, I don't want to sort of, I don't want to make it sound like I'm digging him out because I'm absolutely not. I, I also love Sav, and he's been fantastic for us over the years. But there's a number of players that I would sort of like now us to move on from, and sort of yeah, what are what. Are they long term for us? Look, he's only got a year extension, so I get that. Bradders would be another one, right? So let's just put him out there. So it's Look, not that was going to be my next point. I did have a, a comment I was going to show just quickly before I flashed that up. Connor. Um, um, so he, he, he would be someone. There's, there's, there's certain players, right? There's yeah. certain players that are just, I would like us to now start to move on. And sentiment does need to be removed After from while. those sorts of questions for us to improve our playing squad, right? Um, yeah. But look, yeah, great, great that he's got his extension. Um, as I say, love Sav, he's been brilliant for us. He's done well in the running. As you said, he has got his limitations. He's getting on a bit now, but how many players could we add into that category that we've got in the squad? So, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Connor, good evening, mate. I know you've commented this already. Um, we, me and Ben will come back to this question in the at the end in around 20 minutes. I've got a couple of comments that I've saved up throughout the show. I'm going to bring them back round, and me and Ben will kind of do a nice little summary at the end. That's my plan. Um, but Ben, mm. just on that, Bradshaw. Might not be a next season. Um, John's comment here. We don't we don't know whether Bradshaw has got this option to extend his contract. Obviously, he's been out injured longer than um 
Savile and Leonard have been this season. So if he does, he's probably not quite near the threshold for his number of games yet. He might be there. You might might be able to tell a little bit in terms right, of how Harris hold very professional. Hold the floor for 30 seconds and my laptop's just flashed up saying low battery. Thoroughly professional as ever, but I need to run and get my charge. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> it's leaving me, on, leaving me on my own for 30 seconds. All right. Fair. All right, so um, Bradshaw, yeah, li- listen, Bradshaw hasn't got his new contract yet. Whether he will or not, I don't know. But as we kind of said, uh, or as Ben kind of said there, that at some point we have to move on a little bit from from the longevity of the players. I think there's a few that could fall into that category. You know, we, we all like Sean Hutchinson. We all like Bart. We all like Murray Wallace. But I think there has to be a time, particularly where we're at now, where, where we've got one of the oldest average age squads in this league, there might have to be a time where where we do have to kind of say thank you very much for your service, but we need we need younger, we need cheaper, and we need to arguably try and find better for our value for money. See, I told you only be two sex. Um, go quick. back to your question for me, mate. Sorry. <laughs> um, it, was, it was just on it was on Bradshaw. Um, so well, I think we yeah. Might I mean, see there's, it. there's those rumours that he's got his extension right, but it would seem that has strange. Been, but, yeah, that's it what I was saying. That have... We've yeah released the ones about. Lenny and, and, and Sav, but haven't released it about Bradders. Um, it was a topic of conversation in the WhatsApp group regarding Bradders. Yeah. I think he, look, he, I, I think he's been a very good servant for us. Your opinion, people's opinions on him don't probably agree with myself. I think he's been hard done by in terms of the, the criticism that he gets. Um, but I would like to see him in and around the squad next year, given the fact that we are likely going to be going into the season next year with Nisbet, Bradders and Sayamaku as our only permanent strikers. If you want to put Tom Leahy in there as well, you can, but another youngster. Um, So, look, do I think he's a long-term answer again? No, but should he be in and around the squad for maybe one one more year? Yeah, I do think he would. And it was a question that I did pose back to Jay. My my concerns are if you let the likes of Bradders go, and probably Sav to some extent, all those sorts of players, could you replace them with enough quality for free transfers effectively? Because that's what you would need to to do. Because we wouldn't have the we wouldn't have the money to replace um, a lot of players, right? So you'd have to, could you replace Bradshaw? Could you replace Sav with, with enough quality on free transfers next year? That's like, the challenge have, every, every summer for us, near enough, isn't it? And every club in the league, right? And a lot of clubs would be in the same, same boat. So, and and, and yeah. these two as well, that are, it looks like, well, Pompey could get promoted tomorrow. Um, I think, yeah, I know this is a Millwall podcast, but I, I would like to see Pompey come back into the championship. I've never been to Fratton Park, so I think from that perspective, it would be a good away day. And they're another kind of proper old school club, a little bit like ourselves. So I think they would probably be a bit more of a welcome addition back to the championship rather than maybe Derby, who have been in this league a bit more recently, Ben. Yeah, I'm, uh, we, we spoke about it again earlier, didn't we, mate? Um, both those games will be decent enough games. Um, we can fuck Rotherham off. We can fuck Huddersfield off. Mainly because I've been to Huddersfield so many times now and I've never seen us fucking win. So I'm sick of yeah, tired. Yeah, we'll get rid of them. And me, um, me and Ben were them. kind of divided about the third team that we think Stroke want to get relegated. I said Blackburn because, oh, well, after what happened end of last season, get rid of them. Get rid of them as soon as possible, please. Ben... Yeah rather upset me in the group chat. Go on, Ben, tell everyone what you said. You rather upset me this morning, mate. Well, we all know Dan's love and admiration for Plymouth away. Um, but yeah, sadly, I would, would want to get rid of them. Probably more of a selfish one. Now I'm never... That is, never yeah, you're being down. selfish. I'm thinking of it from the yeah. supporters' perspective, mate. Well, I, I was thinking of it of just big games, right? And just games you want to go to. I know that a lot of people probably disagree and say get rid of Birmingham, but it's always a decent game against them. Um, yeah, but I, I also, while I was, I watched the uh, the Premier League of Darts in Birmingham last night and I did see someone with a picture and uh, on their sign that you get the darts, they wrote Stern John on there and I just decided oh, yeah. after that Birmingham can get relegated. <laughs> get rid of them. Yeah. Get rid of them. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll never get over that, right? But um, yeah, so it's always a decent game against them. It's a decent enough way day. That's yeah. why I keep them. Uh, could have gone for Tony when he was at Scunthorpe. Well, the problem is... He, I, th- was, I think he was still permanently on Newcastle's books. Was I, am I wrong with that, Ben? Or, I don't know, man. I'd have to look I at that. I don't know, yeah. We can't say off the top of our heads, but that's maybe where we do need to get smarter like that. I think you know when a, a young striker goes to gets linked to Peterborough, you know they're kind of hot property then. Peterborough have had a good track record of getting young, 
good strikers in and developing them and sending them on for a very nice amount of money. That's something that we maybe need to look to do ourselves a little bit better. Um, Carl, I can't understand why Bradders hasn't got a new contract yet. I think it's um, probably a little bit to do with Gazza's comment here. I think there's also obviously the fitness aspect. If we're only getting half of a season from Bradshaw, um, would the club rather go out and try and get someone that they can uh, try and uh, use a bit more often? Try and get, I mean, I think it's hard, it might be a bit harsh, but try and get more goals out of as well. I mean, ultimately, Bradshaw is a striker, and other than last season, he hasn't really pulled up too many trees in his in his time with us. Me on the live. I'm trying my best not to, mate. I'm trying, I'm trying to be honest. And I'll tell you what, I'll let Peter upset you instead, mate. Yeah, I mean, he isn't that, is he, right? He's, he, he's, he isn't that. But as I've said, you're then going into the championship season with... If he is going to play down the middle, that is one question there. But Amaku, Nisbet, who's come off a long-term injury and being out for a long period of time this year... And then that's that's thin. Yeah. You've then got to go and buy another striker. So unless, unless we're you're looking at Alafe's coming back, and again we've spoken about that a couple of times. We don't know what the fee might be if we've even got a agreed buyback or if we've got first options. So there's all that to consider. It's just again, have we got the money? I don't see us having a decent transfer budget this year, and we're going to be wheeling and dealing. So my argument has just been, yeah, Bradders isn't a twenty goal a season player but he's a decent enough squad player and will he chip in with the odd goal yeah he will yeah um ben this one's fully on you mate daily mill needs a new laptop what should he get you work in sales mate the floor is all yours i do work in sales but i don't sell laptops unfortunately mate. <laughs> um i'm always been a mac person though my laptop now i'm on is purely my gaming laptop because i'm obviously, I'm obviously an fm nerd um i couldn't i think it's an omen but yeah, I bought it a few years back because I wanted a decent laptop. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't sell laptops, mate. Go okay. go to Cohen's. Okay. Um, <laughs> be nice to give Bart a good send off. Last home game, rumour is he's off. I mean, Bart was very good for us, and I think he did, by all accounts, okay when he came back into the team earlier this season. Um, but he's thirty six, thirty seven now. We do we do need we do need to, to be thinking younger longer term a little bit even if it is second choice goalkeeper someone who could maybe come in behind Sarkic and, and learn from Sarkic or whether that's someone that could maybe come into the team if we was to lose Sarkic on a permanent con permanent deal at any time yeah agree 100 percent everything you just said there mate um also agree with Mill Holdings yeah but it would be nice to give him a bit of a send-off he's been a great servant for us yeah, saved us in countless games. Um, I sadly just think his body's probably caught up with him. Yeah, it'd um, be interesting to see whether he whether he maybe goes back to Poland, whether he drops down the divisions. If he wants to, if he if he was going to retire and wanted to coaching capacity, maybe that's someone the club could look at in terms of goalkeeping. How Coach. old is Bart? Is he thirty five? I thought he was old. I thought it was thirty seven, mate. But he's thirty six. Yeah, so there. 36. I mean, I mean, he might yeah, still he might might fancy it a couple more years. Yeah, I mean, it's up to him, and I think out of what you've just mentioned there, mate, he's probably more likely to go back to Poland. I'd imagine probably if his body's letting him down, it's been well documented about his knee, right? And it's yeah, been rumours about his knee for for a long time, um, even when we first signed him, right? And then didn't sign him and all that fiasco. So yeah, he's he's, he's had a bad knee for a while. Could he even do it anymore? In that, that's in, it. Yeah, we don't know. Um, don't we need pace and athleticism, absolutely. Um, Edwards identified it. Uh, that's one thing I'll give him credit for. He managed to identify what this squad was lacking in abundance. And to be fair to some of the, to be fair to Tanganga and Oberfemi, they've definitely solved solved that problem to an extent. Um, but we need them kind of players long term. I think Amaku is someone who's got it, and I think SA is growing into it a little bit more. But we d we desperately need more pace in in this team. Um, and as we all know, Aldo's working on it. So judging by the fact we need pace. Um, welcome back, Ollie Burke, in the summer. Um, <laughs> Anthony Pike, how about Nick and Alfie May? Now, I would have taken Alfie May last summer because he had a very good track record in League One. He's um, he's from the area, he's from Gravesend, and he was he was available for around about two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. So I think for that price, they're, 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 I know he is twenty eight and doesn't have much of a sell on value, but I thought at that price, it could have been potentially worth a punt. 
Yeah, you probably know more about that than me, mate. I, yeah, but just to go on the whole wider picture of lower league players, yeah, they're the ones you've got to identify, right? You've got to try and... That's the pond we're going to be fishing, yeah. I'd imagine, in the summer. Um, I chose my words carefully there in terms of younger, if Alfie May's 28. But yeah, they're, they're the sorts of players you've got to be looking at. Yeah, well, I think there they can still be value found in players like that, but I do agree the, the younger ones is where you're going to find what we need because obviously we can't just think about the here and now. We also need to think about long-term, think about it from a business uh, point of view. That's just, I think, again, we spoke about it on the Alafo thing, man. That's what makes me think. So one, have we got the buyback agreement in there? It's rumoured both ways. Well, I think we, we do have to... some kind of agreement. We just don't know whether it's an agreement that will... Uh, that gives us first refusal, or if we pay X amount of money, then he, then we get the Lassie's release clause. We we don't know exactly what the that's what I mean. season. We don't know if it's a first option. We don't know if it's an agreed fee. The rumours are all over the place, right? But with him, it'll be interesting to see or have an idea what that fee might be. I know again we've spoken about it a couple of times before, but with with him. I think again, I'm almost certain when he left, the club sort of said it was agreed, it was a six figure fee agreed, which makes me think it wasn't far north of a hundred grand. Because you would, you would, I'd imagine you'd specify if it was higher than that. But if it wasn't much higher than a hundred grand and our buyback clause is 200, 250, I'm mean, you just going to have to pay it, right? Just yeah, swallow, your, uh, swallow, yeah. your, swallow your pride and just go and pay it. Yeah. Um, I mean, getting a striker that stays fit would be nice. I think me, uh, Chris yeah. touched on it in particular in midweek, saying the fact we've had one fit striker for a couple of months who, on a technicality, isn't even our player is um, is is nothing short of a, sh- a shambles. And I do make him right; it is, it's not acceptable. Um, but as we said, there will be a bigger piece on on recruitment and just the overall club coming in the off season. Um, if Bradders is only a half a season, the man. How about Big Matt Smith for the other half? Always <laughs> go down in memory for the for the hat trick away at Forest, but um, yeah. kind of goes on to this point um, about the thirty plus players. Obviously, Smith is now thirty five, I think, um, and although he's doing well in League Two, it'd be a big step up for him to come back here. Um, how much the likes of Tom? Going back Tom to Lee. Danny's point, that's just spot on. Yeah, we need to do exactly that. Yeah. I think again. Don't want to linger on the Edwards era too much, but I do think we would have seen that. And I think we would have seen that in terms of obviously the mayor signing. I do think we would have had a better chance of keeping Tanganga. I do. I don't, uh, whether we would have or not, we had no idea, but I do think we had a better chance of keeping him. And as you said, Danny did identify the fact that we needed all those areas and we needed to improve on those areas. So I do think if Edwards had stayed, we would have gone down that route and we would have started to sign younger players. Definitely. Um, I'm gonna we're gonna try and rattle through the comments. Me and Ben are aiming to wrap this show up in about kind of ten minutes. I'm about six minutes behind on the comments. So if we see some good comments and we don't talk about them tonight, potentially Sunday, potentially the pre-recorded show for next midweek, these comments will all get discussed, as you know. Um pretty sure Peter Peterborough do take a lot of players off Barnet. They clearly seem to have um an agreement or mutual understanding. Yeah, we seem to have one with fucking Dose Hamlet, right? We never get air players. Well, that's what I mean, Bromley. We have a lot of talent Bromley, on our doorstep yeah. in, in South London. That's, yeah. what we, uh, that's what we need to go. A um, bit of laptop advice for you here. Daily Millwall, Alienware, uh, Della Reliable. There you go. Uh, Bart's family is out in Spain. So, I mean, that might not be a bad place to retire. And if you want to go and start a life in Spain afterwards, um, that might not be a bad option for him. Um, do you think we'll bring a few of the youngsters through this season? I will come on to that in a second. That's on my summing up points at the end. Alfie May, too slow and small. Well, he has, he scored a lot of goals in League One and he's done it again this season. I mean, could we really have done any worse than what Nisbet and... I'm, I'm sorry, Ben, to kick you while you're already down, but what Nisbet and Bradshaw have kind of served up between them this season? I, I think it, for, for the price we're talking about there, I, I personally think it could have been worth a punt. And if also, if we'd have signed him, he wouldn't have gone to Charlton and Charlton would probably have been relegated by now if he didn't go there. So that's a good enough reason that we should have signed him uh, on its own. Um, two of the blokes who worked for Millwall a few years ago said to us, Bart's one of the nicest players off the field. Um, I mean, you always see Bart. He's always there in the celebrations, getting involved with the team full time. So I don't think you can take anything away from him. And I do think that maybe someone just coming out of the game, going into a coaching capacity might be beneficial. Ben? Yeah, I, I, I don't know him, but 
obviously, I don't know him. I don't know of him. I haven't heard anything in terms of his, his off the field um, personality. But look, he, he probably could have kicked out, kicked up a fuss when when Long come in, right? Yeah, um, he didn't. So yeah, as I say, I, I would like to give him a good send off. Um, he yeah. has been a very good servant for us um, and a very yeah. very good championship keeper. And dare I say, if he had better distribution, I would imagine, and probably stronger knees, I'd imagine he would have played in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, we asked Tangangi yesterday at the fun day. He did say, wait and see. I mean, who knows until what the summer brings. I mean, I'm sure he's, he's probably obviously been told to say that by someone, you're sure. But there is obviously talk Tottenham might give him a chance in pre-season next season. Um, so if that, if they do then I think that kind of rules out. Alex, who is um, Ugbo's parent club, wouldn't mind getting him for Wednesday go down. So I believe he's contracted to someone in France. I think he's contracted to a club called Troy in Ligue 2. Um, but I think he's fr- I think he's a Chelsea Youth Academy graduate. So if he does want to come back to England and judging by his loan moves to Cardiff and Sheffield Wednesday, potentially he does. If he wants to come back to London, obviously I think the location with Tanganga played a massive part. I mean, we, I think we've got to try and use that to our advantage, haven't we, Ben? Talking, obviously, about yeah. picking up the youth players from, from Dulwich and, and Bromley going forwards as well. Yeah, 100%. And that was the guy I was thinking of. The other one went to um, Norwich, right? The other guy? Yeah, the other there's, yeah there's been a... Ben, was it Ben? Ben Crowhouse went to Brentford from them and Jaden Warner, I think yeah. that's another one. He went to Norwich. So, so yeah, the, ta- there's, the there's talent is... Talent out there. Yeah. Um, you say, I don't, yeah, it is true. Most of the team have been able to to see the weaknesses in this team. And we do need to be clever in the freebie market. That generally means that you have to be quite quick off the blocks if you're in the freebie market, because that's that's how it works a lot of that time of that market. But I do think this summer will be, um, I think with the Euros, it's going to be a slower summer for us because players that go to the Euros, they are international managers, don't want them to get caught up in, um, transfer business and then that was obviously a generally affect the Premier League and then it starts to trickle down the divisions a little bit Just on that there as well on Tony's point and I really really hope you're right Tony and I'm not yeah. criticising the play style too much because he is doing what, what he needs to do to keep us up and he's already said selection wise he's, he's, he's picking players that will run through brick walls and all that sort of thing and wants a Millwall type team so yeah look he clearly is I really hope he, he has evolved as a, as a coach, like he said in his first interview back. And we will see something different. My, again, we've said this a few times tonight, we will do an in-depth piece on this, but my concern with the summer is the amount of players we're going to need. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so. And the amount of players we ever get in is never the amount we're going to need in the summer. Agreed there. So we're going to begin to wrap this up. As I said, I've highlighted a few points for us to come back and talk for at the end of the show. Firstly, Ben, um, on Fleming and Cresswell, would you take a swap deal if Fleming went to Leeds and we got Charlie oh, Cresswell? Fuck, can I? Uh, uh, yeah, purely on resale value and further down the line, I'd imagine again Cresswell's going to have higher resale value than Fleming purely because can I see Fleming going and playing the Premier League? As I said, at a club outside of a bottom three side, no. Can I see Cresswell? Yeah. I can see him playing for a Fulham, a Wolves, someone like that. I don't know. I'm just using yeah. them to nicer clubs. I yeah, guess. no, no, no. Um, yeah. I, I could see him in a few years' time playing. He's got the size, he's English, there's English tax. So, yeah, I, I probably would take that swap deal. Yep. Um, we need to give Alex Mitchell a chance next season, along with Nino and uh, Akoli, and another player, his name's cropped up a little bit tonight, Tom Leahy. Um, how do we feel about that, Ben? Yeah, Alex Mitchell, I think it's almost certain, right? Um, I, he's got to get a look in at least, especially if we are, I think we are going to be losing some centre-halves. I think, well, as again, you see, Tanganga might go. It looks like Murray Wallace will probably leave the club. I think Hutch. if Hutchinson's out of contract, I think he will probably leave the club. So yeah. I think there's, I think he's definitely going to be someone who's probably getting... It may be, again, it's something we touched upon. It'll be interesting to see whether Lincoln come up via the playoffs as well. They might... If we got two or three million, it might be wildly out of their um, budget, it probably is. But if we got two million for a player that's never stepped foot on the pitch for us or played a large amount of games for us, would we take that? Maybe. It's probably a figure wildly beyond his um, valuation. But yeah. I would like to see him given a go next year. He's done very well 
by all accounts. I haven't seen him play, but you see it quite regularly, the Lincoln fans raving about him. So, yeah, yeah I would like to see him given a chance next year. Uh, the other two, don't know, to be honest. I think, I, I know Adam Malachi is doing quite well at Sutton. Um, so, I think, uh, f- from what I'd say off the top of my head, I think Leahy and Akoli probably do need to go out on loan. Akoli particularly, because he's only had half a season. I know he was doing well at Bromley, but then he came back. They didn't extend his loan for the rest of the season. Whether that was their decision, whether that was our decision, I don't know. But he didn't go back out on loan. I think he still needs to play more men's football. Ideally, getting him a good move to a League Two team would be his next step. And Lee, he he needs to go out and play men's football. He hasn't played any men's football um, in his career so far. Um, Obviously, I know he's got a very good track record in youth football, but youth football and men's football are just a completely different um, breed. So I do think... And that that would be with with a Coley, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's He's played at Bromley in the National League, so... Absolutely. So that's, that's on a Coley and Leahy for me. Nino, I'd like to see him be given an option. Uh, I'd like, or at least look at him in pre season because he's a left back by trade. I know he's been playing left wing a little bit, but he's a left back by trade. Our left backs are Joe Bryan, who we know isn't going to be fit every week. We have um, Ryan Longman, who's only on loan with us, and there's every chance that we won't be extending that loan deal. He, he, he'll be off. And then we've also got Murray Wallace, who we suspect is going to be off because he is out of contract. So maybe with him staying at the club, we could keep him and then have Brian as maybe a mentor and then he can obviously step in when Brian gets injured. That's maybe how I see that. But I think Alex Mitchell, absolutely, the club has to be looking at him as someone who can get in to the squad um, first see, uh, next time. Um, the last question I'm going to ask, well, two more questions to ask you, Ben. Uh, one from Anthony, your fellow Northern Wall colleague. Um, do you think the championship will be harder next season? Pompey Bolton Derby coming up better than the likes of Wednesday and Rotherham? Uh, don't have to be better than Wednesday. I think I've been quite impressed with how they've even managed to get themselves out of it under there. Absolutely. You know, Danny Roll. On that. Yeah. Um, they're Rotherham, yeah, they're going to be definitely better than Rotherham. Uh, it's yeah, it's not hard. Um, but I, I yeah, think look, the, I think the three those... teams that probably come down, or at least two, two of them, are probably worse than the teams that are going to go up. Yeah, I would agree there. My concern with all those clubs mentioned, maybe not Bolton now, but Pompey and Derby are going to have bigger budgets than us. I don't and know, well, Derby, I, I, there's still that bit of discrepancy about their FFP. Obviously, they're, they're still a little bit trying to get themselves up straight a little bit, aren't they? So I think they might... Maybe, maybe not, maybe not then. But Pompey, certainly. I know they've been putting in a fair bit of money and you know it's, it's, it's worked for them this year. Um, this Charlie, as we've said... Um, there will definitely be a lot of this coming. First things first, we just need to know what league we're going to be in before we can do this. If we win tomorrow, um, which segues me nicely to Connor's point here, are we safe from relegation? If we win tomorrow, I think we're safe. And then we can start to talk about next season in terms of doing a full squad overhaul, or we can at least do what we'd do, rank all the players, say we'd get rid of, say what we'd want to do. But we need to know what league we're going to be in first to do that. Ben, are we safe from relegation? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Matt. So I think I, th- I think if we win tomorrow, we're safe. Um, I did say if even Plymouth got beat tonight, I think I'd, that would help us out massively. They're obviously winning. But yeah, I think look, if we win tomorrow, we're safe purely because the fixtures remaining for the teams below us are in our favour because they've got to play each other or a few of them have got to play each other. So they all can't pick up maximum points. If we put ourselves on 50... I think I saw the other day on on Twitter and maybe Instagram that there's only been two teams in recent years that have been relegated with more points than, than sorry, higher than 50, 50 points or higher. So you'd have to be thinking it'd be very, very unlucky and we'd have to lose all of our games for the rest of the year, say. So and I'd probably take see. a few hidings as well because our goal difference is OK. Yeah, so I, yeah, if we win tomorrow... We're safe. Sorry, I do think one. I think one I think one more win keeps us keeps us up. To be completely honest, I think whether that whether that comes tomorrow, I hope it does. It might do. It might not. Let's hope it does come tomorrow, so we can enjoy the the uh, the end of the season in a nice relaxing manner because we haven't been able to enjoy most of this season in a relaxing manner. Um, just going to whiz through some of these comments, but I did put this one up to remind me and um, talk about Stephen, who's going to put the plug out tonight for his raffle. Well. I suppose I better as a, as the host. So someone who Stephen knows from Millwall has very kindly given him 
a, um, a Byron Webster signed shirt from um, the Tony Craig testimonial, I believe it is. He's got the authentication certificate and um, he's going to be bringing He's doing a raffle for that. I believe tickets are around five pounds each. He's going to close just before the Plymouth game. The winner's going to be able to collect the shirt from the Plymouth game. And Ben, do you remember what charity said it was going to all the money? It's, I know it's not going in his back pocket. It's going to mine, isn't it again? It's going to mine. So yeah, I so, think so. I'm not we think it's going to mine. We will um, we'll either get the link tweeted out or in the description. And I know S Stephen is going to be someone who is going to be on the Sunday night live post-match. I know that um, Jay has already said he's going to be around to uh, come out to be there on the, um, on, on the Sunday. Um, ben, I don't know whether you're going to be around on Sunday. I'm not going to chuck you under the bus. So, um, not sure yet, mate. Not no, sure. You're, you're probably are you at the golf tomorrow or? Uh, no, uh, I have got my little one tomorrow. Evening boss, uh, by I the way. will Evening. be watching the golf. I have been intently keeping an eye on it whilst we're, yeah. uh, whilst we've been on. You've probably seen me looking down and looking at my phone and stuff. I so, have quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I have been intently keeping my eye. Um, on the golf and we'll be watching it over the weekend. Yeah, and um, I'm I'm working this weekend, so I actually won't be at the den tomorrow. And I I said earlier this week I was a little bit disappointed. Um, well, I didn't feel like that way after the Huddersfield game, but after winning in the week, you do feel a little bit disappointed that you can't go. Um, but unfortunately, that that's work sometimes. So I knew what I was getting myself signed up for when I started my job. So no complaints from me. Um, but I'll definitely be there at the Plymouth game, and I know. Ben, you're coming down for the Plymouth game as well, aren't you? I am, mate. Um, I'm coming down. Uh, that's, 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 yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming I know, down. I know, yeah. Having, no, he's coming we're, down. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're having a round of season. Down, so down we'll get south together, for, right? Yeah, we're having a round of season. Down south for, for Northern Wall. Yeah, and we'll, yeah, uh, we're having a round of season. Get together, right? Hopefully, so. hopefully, we'll be celebrating after that Plymouth game. But um, listen, everyone, thank you so much. I know this live's been probably a little bit chaotic tonight with no Stephen Omer and mickey so I, I really appreciate all of your uh support for helping me to get through as i said i think this is my first solo one and ben thank you for sticking around with me anytime mate always thank a pleasure you. pleasure as always mate i really appreciate it cheers to chris who was on early with us um usually i say to everyone can you go and direct your abuse at omer and mickey but tonight please can you go and direct it at joe because he absolutely bottled it on us and decided not to turn <laughs> up um but listen i really appreciate the uh the support and there you go look i'm already getting compliments on my hosting style so uh we'll, we'll pass that we'll, that feedback will be noted i think mickey has very briefly jumped in right at the end so um we'll make sure that gets passed on but thank you very much everyone um if you know someone who hasn't listened to this this will be out hopefully on spotify at some point and there will be the sunday night show and obviously social media spotify wherever you listen to your podcast youtube there it's where it will be um but until now uh enjoy the game everyone tomorrow and for those of you that will be able to listen to Stephen and Jay on Sunday enjoy but in the meantime come on you lions <laughs>